Good afternoon. This is Ray Tuchiyama of ThinkTech Asia, and we're here with another show focusing on a topic that is increasingly important in tourism. It's called medical tourism for people who go abroad outside of their cities to another place to get a medical or dental procedure and still have money left over for a vacation. <laughs> That's very simple. And we're going to be focusing more on the potential for me medical tourism from China to Hawaii. And right now there's about 9 million annual visitors to Hawaii. And how to grow that uh, number with medical tourism. But it's not that simple. There are other places that have been doing that for a longer period, like in Bangkok, Singapore, or even in the United States, Mayo Clinic, Virginia Mason in Seattle. How can Hawaii prepare for the surge for the potential of medical tourism? And here with us today from Beijing, we have Russell Liu, who will be introducing our guest who will be joining us and really giving us insights into how can Hawaii become a player in international global medical tourism. Russell, where are you in Beijing right now? Well, good morning uh, to all of our listeners out around the world and in Hawaii. Um, I'm Russell Leo, I'm the co-host on today's show. And we're live in Beijing. We're outside the Fourth Ring Road in Beijing. Uh, it's a very warm day. It's a 90 degree wow. temperature. But today we're real fortunate to share with our audience uh, our guest, uh, Sonny John. Sonny is the CEO of Nitrips, a US company, a white company. And we're going to talk about China's outbound medical tourism, rapidly and otherwise. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about how big is this China outbound medical tourism potential. We're going to talk about who is going outbound, what kind of medical treatment is being sought, where are the Chinese going, and why are they going. And we're going to look at how big this market is, and if any, is anything, is anybody doing anything about it in the void? And Sonny John is going to give us a lot of insight today. So to my right is Mr. Sonny John. Hey, morning. Uh, my name is Sonny John. I'm the CEO of Metric. I'm happy to be here to share some of my thoughts on this market because this is the market I'm working on for two years. And also, Metric is a Hawaiian born company. I would love to do something for Hawaii to bring more traffic to Hawaii, especially in the medical end. So, Sonny, let's look at this industry, this Chinese outbound medical tourism, now rapidly on the rise. And numbers show 2016, we had about half a million people. 483,000 yes. Chinese travelers, medical travelers, yes. on outbound. And globally, they spent $551 billion, of which only 1.8% was spent in the U.S., which amounts to $10 billion. And the annual growth would be 31%. Can you tell us what, by 200, 2020, what's the forecast? You know, for this number, um, I have, a, actually, I have different thoughts on different numbers than this survey, but you know, based on this number, uh, I, um, based on my market conception, uh, the spending to U.S. Uh, will be much larger because um, you know, um, uh, only one company that I know can bring like 1,000 patients to the top institutions like uh, MD Anderson, uh, Mayo Clinic, and Stanford, those alone. So, uh, it should be larger, but you know, this is not my point. My point is the market is large enough for, uh, for Hawaii to be one of the participants in the market. And um, I also want to discuss more about how we can approve uh, in terms of Hawaii, position Hawaii as uh, a favorite destination for medical tourism. So, so Sunny, can you tell me why did you form measures and, and uh, tell us what kind of services you provide for medical tourism? Okay, um, 
little bit background of myself. Um, I, I've been working for Bank of uh, Bank Hawaii's international banking for uh, seven years before, and um, I before that I was um, a, a practicing dentist in, in China in Beijing. So given my background of a medical background, my financial background, um, I find out uh, during my stay in Hawaii, a lot of friends come to me to ask about the opinion on how to, you know, make appointment with the top you know, hospitals in the U.S. and uh, how they cannot find the top doctors in the U.S. So I see that there is an a, a increasing demand on um, the middle class of the Chinese to seek um, opinions, not only second opinion, but medical opinions uh, from the top institutions in the U.S. So, and then I think, you know, um, I have um, another partner from a medical insurance company, a major medical insurance company in the U.S. So we find out there is a unique opportunity for us to utilize uh, insurance platform to provide a, a platform solution for the Chinese patient who seek um, overseas uh, medical treatment. So basically our products, you know, in, uh, service including, we have um, hospital uh, networks in the US that covers 90% of the hospitals nationwide, including the 50 states in the United States. We have uh, 75,000 pharmacies coverage nationwide in the United States, including Walgreens, CVS, and um, uh, you know Walmart, Costco, those those pharmaceutical uh, you know uh, stores. And also we have a telemedicine setup for people who cannot go to a ch uh, U.S. for their medical treatment. They can using the new technologies to to see doctors in China through a telemedicine platform to seek second opinions and to seek uh, medical consultation services. So basically, and this is our service right now. Okay, so yeah. So let's try to get an understanding of uh, who your typical client is. It seems like it's a platform where you're working with insurance companies. Yes. Um, and it seems like the kind of services um, will depend perhaps on the market segment. So I understand from a scale of one to 10, the 10 being the most wealthy. Mm -hmm. Where does your client fit in on this scale? You know, for one thing is for sure, um, for overseas treatment is not only for super rich, because, um, but US market because of the medical charge is, uh, is, is considered very high comparing with the China one. Um, I think middle class above, most of them, they, they can have the capability, financial capability to seek uh, medical treatment option in Hawaii. And the typical, uh, in the US, I'm sorry, and the typical clientele of mine, uh, my group is middle class above, maybe if from, from seven, eight, all the way to 10, so, uh, you know, the middle class in China is, in the major cities, which is Shanghai, Guangzhou, or Xinjiang, those cities, uh, the middle class, their spending power is huge. What's well, interesting, because industry reports say that a lot of the outbound tourists from China, medical tourists, are super wealthy that are coming to the U.S. Now, that was like 1.8% back in 2016 of all global uh, Chinese travelers. Only 1.8% went to the U.S., and it seems that these were for very uh, essential treatment, uh, much more uh, uh, sophisticated treatment, cardiovascular, uh, cancer treatment. Yes, yes. Because of um, U.S. has the top healthcare institution, has the world class, you know, the top doctors, has world class research centers. We have, um, you know, but the different clinical trials for the new drugs coming out. So based on this, a lot of uh, cancer patients in China, they, they know the difference. Not, you know, I'm not saying the doctors here is not good enough. It's just, you know, for the new drugs, um, they don't have access to the new drugs, the new treatment, 
matter. You know, and uh, right now, um, the pharmaceutical uh, industry is evolving so fast, yes. so quickly. So um, the patients that are seeking the new, yes. new medicines. Yes. That's a really interesting talk because you know, I've been a lawyer in Chinese here for 14 years. And to get regulatory approval for drugs is very expensive, very time consuming. Yeah, and you may not get approval. So it's very interesting because now if you work with insurance companies, if you work with drug companies, the latest drugs, you don't have to go offshore to China. You can yeah. still do in the U.S. So that's an attractive uh, point for many Chinese uh, patients that will get access to medical and drugs. So that's a sweet spot. Uh, but you will get a wider reach, not only food, but also the middle class. Yes. Yes. You know, um, that's a very interesting point because um, um, China has the largest cancer patients. I mean, uh, annually, um, there are like 4 million newly um, detected uh, cancer patients each year. And another scary number is um, the five-year survival rate in China for cancer patients only 30 percent, and uh, the same category uh, in China, in the U.S. is 66 percent of the survival rate. So that difference, you know, drive the people from China to U.S. to see the better, you know, options. So that's a very good point for our audience. Um, if you don't know China, up to a few years ago. Um, they, they've had a ban on smoking in public places. Yeah. The culture has changed after the Olympics. Yeah. Less and less people are smoking. But there's a large segment of the population that have been exposed to smoking and cancer. Yeah. So this is the group that are now seeking medical treatment. And we we yeah. can return to that um, huge topic of uh, patients and, and treatments right after this break. We're in Think Tech Asia. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. We are back uh, d discussing this very interesting field of medical tourism. There is Russell Liu and Sunny Zhang back in Beijing, which uh, will be a, a really a, a foundation for further discussions. This is not a small topic, but a very large topic, and one that will involve, of course, uh, hospitals with people and of course uh, tour tourism and the uh, industry here in Hawaii. But first, uh, we were discussing how to make people aware of, of a, such a, uh, a topic called medical tourism exists for people in Hawaii and how to make them uh, uh, consider this as part of their marketing, branding, and infrastructure. Go ahead, Russell. <laughs> We're back here with Sunny John, live in Beijing, and uh, we're going to talk about what Hawaii can do to wrap up medical tourism. And let's look at the numbers again. In 2016, uh, Chinese medical travelers spent $6.3 billion in treatment, plus another $3.4 billion on related travel accommodation, making a $10 billion business. Mm -hmm. Of this $10 billion, where are the Chinese currently going to spend dollars for treatment in the U.S.? Why not Hawaii? And we're going to talk about how much of this money can Hawaii realistically attract in this industry. Yeah, you know, for this ten billion dollars, um, I think what 
how it doesn't have is the, the top uh, healthcare institution. I mean, the top means you know, I, I know uh, Prince and job are all top, you know, um, uh, hospitals in Hawaii. But the nationwide, we don't have a brand name like a Mayo Clinic. We don't have a brand name like a Massachusetts General Hospital, MD Anderson, UC, you know, LA, Stanford. Those big, you know, names on, on market. So um, we uh, we cannot compete them from their back end. But I'm not saying we cannot compete totally because Queens has MD Anderson. Uh, logos on their cancer centers, and also I know Job has a Seattle Cancer Care uh, Alliance logos on their, you know, uh, as a, their affiliate type of uh, hospitals. But you know, the the patients, uh, their spending behavior is for Chinese. They want to see the best doctor. They want to go to the best hospital for 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 the particular, you know like an essential treatment options. But, you know, in Hawaii, in terms of Hawaii's unique type of advantage, we have to be realistic. We have to find out what Hawaii can offer. What we can, what's our competitive advantage, we can attract more Chinese in, right? So for that end, we as a company, metric, we're working with uh, not only job and Queens to develop uh, we call it executive checkup program. So it, we're focusing on uh, cancer screening uh, services for um, for the executives, for the for the rich, uh, you know, wealthy uh, Chinese population. So you know, for Hawaii, definitely we're targeting on those nine or ten, not seven or eight. <laughs> they they don't stand in Hawaii for medical reason for the middle you know, class. For people who choose Queen's or job to do their med, you know, to do their executive checkup has to be super rich because of given the cost of our hotel cost, you know, uh, logistic cost and everything put together, the price tag is huge. So in that market we also need to compete with a lot of uh, popular destinations. Japan is one of them. The reason why Japan is so popular for executive checkup program, not only they developed the program for so long, for now it's more than 10 years in China. The other reason is their, their charge is uh, considerably low. Comparing with US, the price tag is normally is one third to half of uh, Hawaii price. So, and also distance wise, you know, it's easier to commute. It's, you know, only three hours flight from Beijing, two and a half, three hours from, from Beijing. So, those are the, uh, you know, the, the factors we have to take into consideration that we know uh, Hawaii has a unique um, opportunity because Hawaii. It's not a place you can, those type of feeling cannot get out of other places else. So what the program we're developing is, like a, if a, a, a seven or 10 days program, they spend one or two days in hospital for exactly checkout, for the screenings and those services. And then the other day they can play golf, they can play, they can go sexy. So we have to combine this advantage Hawaii can offer us and then put it together as a mature product to sell to the top rich populations in China. That's one segment I think Hawaii has the advantage. The second segment is um, senior care sections. You know, um, I know some companies are, are thinking of a timeshare type of senior care uh, services in, in, in Hawaii. So this is also the healthy group we can spend the quality time in Hawaii, but with uh, the, the medical staff on board to help them to you know solve some any you know issues they may have during their travel. So I think those are the market Hawaii should focusing more on 
rather than just um, compete hack to hack for those uh, with those top you know hospitals in mainland because we don't have that kind of advantage compared to good names. So this is a very interesting observation study. It seems like the essential care by the high wealth we're competing on one end with Mayo Clinic, you're competing with Cincinnati, competing with Cleveland hospital systems. And on the other hand, you're competing with the Asia destinations for elective treatment, which is South Korea and Japan, uh, logistic-wise is cheaper and, and much more convenient. So you have to have a niche, and I guess why it's magical having a name like that. So uh, I'm just curious about your observation about these elder senior living timeshare, because I know uh, my previous firm I'm working with, large insurance, Chinese insurance companies are coming to the U.S. and investing heavily into uh, senior, elder, assisted living care places in cities like San Francisco. Could that work in Hawaii realistically? We lost you. Uh, Do we lose audio? Okay. Uh, sorry for this uh, um, intrusion here of uh, wonders of technology sometimes fail. I hope that we can get Russell and uh, Sunny Zhang back on track on the, uh, on the tube here. But like uh, Sunny and Russell were discussing, there is a huge potential market for medical tourism. But what is Hawaii's niche? Virginia Mason, Mayo Clinic, Stanford, Mass General, all have very highly developed infrastructure in terms of, say, as Chinese-speaking nurses, Chinese uh, food, uh, even DVDs and uh, entertainment at the hospital. And so how can Hawaii leverage the vacation part of exciting natural uh, vacation uh, attractions so that it is part a, of a visit here to Hawaii and to have a great uh, medical procedure or checkup. There are places in Bangkok, uh, Bunrigrad, Raffles in Singapore. Uh, there are other hospitals very famous for attracting UK, EU, uh, Middle Eastern uh, visitors, and they are there by thousands uh, having great treatment, and also that raises the quality of medical treatment in that city for local people. And th I think that's another uh, kind of promotion that you can say that what does medical tourism bring to a city? And it helps local residents enjoy a higher level of medical treatment because the hospital transformed into a place for uh, higher wealth uh, individuals to come and pay for better doctors, better nurses, better equipment, and better programs in many different areas of treatment. So Hawaii can look at that for the long term. How does uh, healthcare be beneficial through medical tourism? So we're going to go back to this area many times in the future with Russell and others contributing to how to uh, formulate a strategy to develop a medical tourism infrastructure in Hawaii. This is Ray Tsuchiyama for ThinkTech Asia. Hope you will join us in the future again.